there's a good chance this thing will go jogging in the countryside. So at 26,000 euros, you don't really hear of many seven-seaters at that price. Big expansion happening with Dutch, and this equally means we are witnessing an expansion within the Renault-Nissan alliance. Now, about 20 years ago, or even 10 years ago, Dacia was a laughing stock manufacturer, a manufacturer nobody had faith in. They were known for building cars that were cheap to afford and that were simply used for A to B journeys. Today, Dacia is a very promising player and one of the most influential players in the automotive industry, primarily because they offer a cheap price tag and something that's affordable and also becoming a good choice for company purchase, also known as fleet purchase, everyone. Now you all should know that the Dacia Jogger is not the first ever family car, namely a seven-seater. There used to be a model that goes by the name Dacia Logi. Now it's a bit mysterious what happened to it, guys. They just disappeared instantly, much like French cars, basically, because uh, Renault, Nissan, and just like other French car manufacturers, they have a habit of coming up with something one day, and then the next day, poof, they disappear in thin air without any explanation, but, in, uh, but there's always a compensation, guys. This Dacia Jogger is a promising compensation, but it should be noted that there's a possibility that the Logi was discontinued because of the demand for crossover SUVs. Now, I have some exciting news to tell you all. This Dacia Jogger costs 26,000 euros, fully loaded, top of the range, everyone. It's not very often you hear this, but in today's generation, it is rare. We're gonna see if this is good value for money or not. Exterior of the Dacia Jogger, everyone. Looks really, really interesting how they've gone about it. So overall, the front has maintained its styling that's original. It looks like the Dacia Sandero uh, and also the Dacia models before it, guys. It's just the exact same front styling. Um, but one thing that's remarkable is that they've added some paint to the lighting. It's, it's, uh, it's in white. And Dacia has changed their logo recently, so this is amazing. It's really good how Dacia has gone about it. The overall shape has some references to past Dacia models, like the Logan MCV, everyone. So it was, a, it was like an estate wagon of the Dacia Logan, but uh, taller. Uh, now, it, it's got some reference to it, but it is far more interesting than ever. Now, um, the philosophy of having a seven-seater and then something that looks like a hybrid, like something between a mono espace and a crossover SUV. This philosophy was with Renault since a very long time, especially with the Renault Espace, everyone. You get the Japanese reliability combined with the French styling. Now, because this is a jogger, there's a good chance this thing will go jogging in the countryside. So it's uh, good that they have the hard plastic on the side. Five spoke wheels. Now, this is the hubcap, but it looks too good that I was actually convinced it was an alloy. I've seen this practice uh, being used uh, by Renault on their uh, Renault Clio. Now, whilst exploring the exterior of this Dacia jogger, I also noticed some questionable aspects. The first thing I'd like to point out, guys, is um, first of all, as parking aid, despite it being of the, uh, the top of the range, you only get rear parking sensors and there's no sign of a camera or a 360 degree parking camera and uh, you do not get front parking sensors either guys and it should be noted that uh, despite it being the top of the range uh, these are interesting side lights the last time i've saw, seen something like this was in the mid 2010s now it is time to take a look at the interior everyone the interior of the dacia jogger so the interior of the Dacia Jogger, everyone. Now, first thing that should be noted is you do get manual seating adjustments. Honestly, I was not surprised about this aspect because it's uh, something that doesn't really surprise me. Uh, for a price of 26,000 euros, it's, it would be generous to have electric seating adjustments, but uh, it's not very necessary. And uh, that equally means there's so little to go wrong. That was also another philosophy behind the Dacia uh, brand in general. The, to have less electronics so there's so little to go wrong that's also one reliability factor now the interior of the dacia jogger looks very interesting how they've gone about it so um it's true it's maintained uh, some budget materials like hard plastic fabrics everyone but one thing that should be noted is dacia has managed to still play it stylish and um, it's visually uh, it looks like they've followed some uh, renault traits uh, it's really good. So, infotainment system right here, guys. 
then over here uh, you get your climate controls like this now uh, Dacia has stuck to some classics right here no buttons no digital controls or anything on the pro it is reliable it is something that's built to last and it'll there's so little that will go wrong with this but on the other hand 26,000 euros and for the 2020s there will be expectations so it would have been nicer if Dacia had played it a bit digital or more techy but it's fine you all be the judge uh, otherwise in terms of uh, presentation I would like to talk about the seating guys first of all the seats look very interesting the fabric seats with white stitching combined really really good how they've gone about it now the now on the side guys you get this fabric trim squidgy and uh, quite nice to feel and it's very uh, pleasant to lay your arm right here on this armrest there and you get an extra armrest on this side as well nice armrest right here this is very interesting how it's have gone about it so it's very comfort oriented something that is uh, uh easy to live with okay so uh, now we should uh, talk about uh, the steering wheel guys the steering wheel is now the steering wheel is also very interesting it's um, a four spoke steering wheel and I really like the design of it There's no storage up here for some reason brings me to another topic everyone the topic of practicality uh, now in this Dacia uh, Dogger practicality looks like a hit or miss aspect because on the top you do not get any uh, storage but down here you do get some surprisingly nice storage which is good for your telephone and then over here 12 volt socket quite pleasant uh, but for some reason it's a bit strange I do not know maybe it was an afterthought for some reason you have your uh, uh, USB point right up there. Now I don't know if it was just an afterthought everyone but something is really interesting. You get a USB point right there. Now there's a possibility this was intended for someone who puts their phone right here attached to the air vent. Now we have to check out the glove box everyone. The most interesting part. Uh oh. The glove box is average for its price and segment I guess and you get an additional pocket there. But the only thing is that it's not really reachable from the driver's seat. So basic practicality has not really been thought through, guys. It's been really basic. Dacia has gone very basic about this interior. Right side, guys, you get an additional storage. Well, all right, um, I was wrong. It seems like this is not a storage space, although I thought it was. This is for your fuse box. Now that is rather questionable, guys. Otherwise, let's hope the door bin can shed some light and the door bin cannot indeed. Uh, there's no big water bottle that can fit there. And, uh, but it, uh, the pocket is deep, that's for sure. Now, cup holders right here are of fixed sizes, guys. You, uh, it's quite nice and you do not get a central console storage, although you get a little storage right there. Anything I found questionable about this interior, it's going to be a bit difficult because it is true it's um, it's 26,000 euros so I wasn't you know expecting much for a seven seater but I do have to point out that some things were placed at the really questionable places like for example this USB point is at a rather uh, non-conventional location and uh, for some reason despite all the lighting controls being right above uh, on the stokes or something uh, you have um, an, a part of the lighting control that's isolated all the way down there now it's time to explore the rear seats so uh, ease of entrance guys it's uh, it's a very wide entry quite nice now uh, good thing you have a handle right here uh, i have a lot of leg room i have quite a good amount of knee room my headroom is also quite decent guys it's uh, very pleasant and uh, overall getting inside it was easy and now the seating feels good feels i'd say on the comfy side guys just what i need back seats can fit three people everyone so you do not get a center arm uh, rest or uh, something but it's not a very big deal you do get a lot of leg room guys and the center is flat so that's really good now you get a beacon of hope lighting up there you got a coat hook and a handle right there so that's quite a good amount of practicality solutions and if you want you can fold the rear seats down like this and there you have a nice uh, space to move houses basically we have to talk about boot space guys the space in the back now it's very interesting the way things are very similar concept to a mono espace or a minivan as it were 
MPV, as it were. So uh, very interesting, very easy to live with, guys. Very practical. Uh, removable blind that's just right above. Otherwise, you get a nice uh, beacon of hope lighting. Uh, immer uh, spare tire kit, guys. And uh, also, I should remind you all, this Dacia Jogger is a seven-seater. How amazing is that? 26,000 euros. You don't really hear of many seven-seaters at that price. Quite pleasant. The, oh, there's a cup holder for the rearmost passenger, the third row passengers. That's a plus. Wonderful. So it's well equipped. Just don't expect the best of it. Here's my conclusion of the Dacia Jogger, everyone. My conclusion is that this is one of the most promising seven-seaters of today's generation, and it gets even better, guys. It's going to be released soon with hybrid technology. How exciting is this? And in the future, there could be an electric version. Who knows, guys? The Nissan-Renault alliance gets better each year, and let's hope that this also includes quality, reliability, and driving pleasure, guys.